Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the recent discoveries coming from this wonderful object known as Markarian 231. Today you're going to find out a little bit more about this unusual quasar and also why it's sort of exciting. Welcome to What The Math. Now this video was actually requested by one of the wonderful Patreon supporters and just like me he was actually really interested to find out what else is happening with this unusual object known as Mercurian 231. I've also been following this object for quite a while mostly because to date this is the closest so-called quasar to our galaxy and it allows us to actually study these objects in a lot of detail. But before I tell you more about this object, let's briefly talk about the history of quasars and why they're sort of exciting. So back in the 60s, the scientists started noticing that there were a lot of really strange radio emissions coming from various spots in the night skies. And they were nothing like we've ever seen before. The actual spectrum of the radio transmissions or radio signals was nothing like here on Earth. And it wasn't aliens because it seemed to be too random and too natural, but at the same time they couldn't really explain what's causing these signals. And it actually took a really long time, two decades as a matter of fact, to finally figure out what they're looking at. And the quasar we're talking about today, we actually discovered this back in 1969, but we had no idea what it was. But then someone realized that what we're looking at here is actually a highly redshifted radio signal of common elements like oxygen, hydrogen, helium, and a lot of other things that are basically common here on Earth and in our galaxy, but they had no idea how to explain this. Some of the things were redshifted by about 50%, suggesting that either this was an extremely massive object that would be almost impossible to explain, or it was a really, really far away and extremely powerful object that was also very difficult to explain. So the scientists were actually stuck not knowing what these were up until about 1987. And most of this was because we didn't even know that black holes were actually real or that galaxies could exist really, really, really far away. And finally, in the 80s, we figured out that not only were these actually really massive objects, these were really massive galaxies, but they were also extremely powerful in projecting their astrophysical jets right at us through their supermassive black holes. In other words, these signals were nothing more but these extremely massive black holes creating a lot of radio signals. But turns out that only about 10% of all of the quasars are radio quasars. Over time we discovered a lot of other quasars including of course ultraviolet and infrared quasars, which of course is one of the more common quasars as well. And it just so happens that the closest one of these objects is this, is the extremely beautiful Markarian 231. This is a galaxy where you can actually see the actual galactic parts, but just like every other quasar, it's extremely bright in the middle. But this brightness is not optical, which is why you don't really see it as blinding or as really bright here. It's an infrared light. It's an extremely bright infrared quasar, and it is actually the brightest infrared object in the nearest billion light years away from us. And over time we also realized that there could be two supermassive black holes here. One really really large one, about 150 masses of the sun in the middle, and one similar to the one in our own galaxy orbiting around it. Although some of the recent studies are not so sure about this, but so far this is still the best explanation. And because of the relative proximity of this quasar, which is around 581 million light years away from us, it allows us to basically start understanding these objects with so much detail. We've never been able to study quasars as well as we can with this particular object. And mostly because all of the other quasars or their um, technical cousins known as blazers, which are even brighter, are really far away, at least 30 times farther away. Like for example, not so long ago we discovered the first ever really really distant blazer at distances of about 13 to 14 billion light years away. That's at least 30 times as far. This however is our neighborhood in comparison. And in the last few years we've discovered a lot of really interesting things about this quasar and, um, well I guess by definition other quasars as well. So some of them do produce a lot of stars like this one and there's actually a very interesting ring around the center where approximately 100 masses of the sun of matter creates new stars pretty much every single year. It also obviously produces a tremendous, tremendous amount of energy, it's extremely well visible in infrared from really far away, and it's basically one of the brightest infrared objects you can find in the night skies. Which is why it's also known as ULIRG, Ultra Luminous Infrared Galaxy. 
It's also obviously really active and back in 2017-2018 there was a really really large mission that allowed us to study basically quasar emissions in a lot of detail, which also allowed us to calculate that the amount of energy released was about 10 billion times more than our sun every single second. With the actual material moving at around 97% of the speed of light, creating this tremendously powerful astrophysical jet that's visible from pretty much everywhere in the universe. And because of this, these objects are usually several thousand times brighter than a typical galaxy like the Milky Way, which is why we can usually see them from essentially the edge of the universe itself. But since all of these quasars are also kind of different, some of them actually peak in ultraviolet light, some of them have a predominantly infrared emissions and some of them only have radio emissions, we're always really interested to find out how is it that they're so different and what makes them so unique. And this specific quasar is also really interesting because we've recently discovered something really unusual coming from the center of the quasar. These scientists whose paper you can find in the description below discovered really high speed emissions of a lot of molecular oxygen, basically the same oxygen that we used to breathe here on the planet. Now it wasn't really coming from the center of the quasar, it seems to have been actually located about 32,000 light years away from the center. In other words, more or less from the center of the disk itself. And this is why it's even more mysterious, because the oxygen was moving really fast. Here you can kind of see the speeds reported are over a thousand kilometers per second, meaning that the oxygen was actually escaping the galaxy. And the scientists who discovered this now think that maybe this is actually also related to the sudden creation of the stars, because normally we expect um, typical active galaxies not to produce too many stars. But in this case, the oxygen flow seems to act as a kind of a coolant, and it actually cools down the gas material around the galaxy. And because the gas is now cooled by this oxygen flow, these stars now get a chance to be created but they also potentially have a lot of oxygen in them. Although as of today, there's really no explanation for why this oxygen is moving so fast, where it came from, or what exactly it's doing to the galaxy itself. And in case you were wondering how they actually know this is oxygen, it's by looking at the radio emissions. And here they detected the emissions around 118 GHz, which corresponds to the emissions of oxygen, but this one was actually redshifted, allowing it to go through our atmosphere and thus be detected here on the planet Earth. Normally it's actually difficult to detect oxygen from Earth because a lot of the emissions get absorbed by our atmosphere, but if an object is really really far away and its emissions are redshifted, it actually goes through the atmosphere and can be seen with typical telescopes. And this is exactly how they discovered so much about this quasar. Now for now this is the first detection of such unusual event coming from a quasar, but in the last few years we've learned so much about these objects. Like for example one of the coolest discoveries was that it turns out a lot of quasars are actually aligned in a certain rotation along the so-called cosmic web produced by various types of matter including dark matter. And this was one of the biggest discoveries about quasars in the last uh, few years. And now we're learning more about them. So I think in the next few years we'll discover so much that we'll finally be able to understand how all of this actually affects life here on Earth as well. And most importantly, how all of this might affect life on our planet when our own galaxy occasionally becomes a quasar or an active galactic nuclear galaxy as well. In other words, all of this is really important for us to learn more about how life was created on Earth and how all of this influences the evolution of life as well. But for now, that's all we know about Markarian 231. It's definitely one of the most fascinating quasars out there, and it's definitely going to be in the news a lot more once we discover more about this unusual object. For now, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.